Hi there, this is Russ with Wing Saber Historical Fencing, and today we're going to talk axes, or in this case, the plastic party axes we use so we can have fun with our friends <laughs> without crippling them. In this lineage, we have the use of the Fokosh, or the long-handled tomahawk, as you could think of it if you're talking in North American terms. This is a very, very common weapon in East Central Europe. So in Hungary, it's called a Fokosh, F-O-K-O-S. S is pronounced like sugar in Hungarian. If you want it to be S, that would be S-Z. So this is F-O-K-O-S. So we're very quiet about the Fokosh. In other parts, this might be known as a Velashka, or a Chupaga, or a Bartka. These things have been used as canes. They have been used as issue weapons. These were actually issued and created in the, during the Eastern Front in World War I which is how it comes into my lineage. Also go far back in time with axes with something on the back of them all the way back into the medieval period and then some. So if you look at typologies from back in the Soviet era, you can see a bewildering variety of different axes. For our purposes, the important part of the word fokosh is that it means it's got something on the back end. Whether it's a little chisel or hammerhead like this is simulating or a spike For example, something like this, or sometimes a spike with a ball on it. Very handy for smashing through a helmet, but making a big enough hole that you don't get your spike stuck. Or even something where you've got a hammer on one side and a spike here, like military picks. Military picks, in theory, can be considered a variation of a Fokosh. We train them that way because frankly, it's a stick and something on this side and something on that side. For the most part, once you get into the modern era, we're talking about smaller and lighter weapons. So we're gonna show some basic techniques and things you can do with them. And there is a plethora of various folk dances out there. If, if you look at Fokosh dancing or stick dancing from the Carpathian Basin, you'll see lots of examples. And that goes all the way up actually into Scandinavia where you have various peasants doing fun things with axes, because why the heck not? All right, let's look at techniques. When I am cutting with an ax, the important thing to realize is that this edge is not a meter long or anywhere close to it. So when I go to lop his head off, I can't do this. In this case, all I have done is given him free dental work. Now, you still have three quarters of a pound to a pound of metal on the end of a really long lever arm. That smack is good enough for putting a bad guy out of the picture. But I have to be very careful to keep my edge in really good alignment when I'm practicing cutting, or else I will not cut. I also have to aim with the ax head. If I swing this like it's a sword, and I try to do terrible things to Coleman here, what's actually happening is I'm going to hook. I'm going to miss, and the same cutting action that would result in a beheading with a saber or a sword will instead grab him. There is no reason to train hooking with an ax. All you have to do is cut badly, and there's your hook. I have to swing this as if it is actually a pick. I'll use a little baby one, because it's more fun. If I swing this like it's a sword, I get that. If I swing it like it's a one-dimensional object, I can aim that exactly where it needs to go. If I swing it and I don't get the aiming, all I've done is grab his plastron. At this point, he giggles because he's about to kick me somewhere, <laughs> somewhere I don't want to get kicked. <laughs> Easiest way to tell, get a cheap ax and go to town on some brush. And if at the end of the day you have lots of green right here, you have been swinging it like a sword and not like an ax. So, I can hit like that through the plastron. I can hit, I can hit, I can hit. All of these are really, really terrible things to do to your friends, which is why we have plastic party axes. Leather ones, Kydex, if you're really gentle, I don't recommend training with the metal ones except with full gear. There are some very lightweight ones sold by Purple Heart that are fine in absolutely full HEMA gear. Do not use them unarmored. Wear the full kit when you play with them. All right, let's look at some techniques about ax versus sword. So it's not an accident that this is flat 
I can finish a fight by doing that. I don't need a spike, and I can also use the top of the axe head defensively. This will weird some of you in the audience out. If you need a secondary reference, go look up George Silver. He talks about the head being used defensively. So as he cuts one at me, just to keep it simple for the sake of camera, Got one. I can smash this through. And if I miss, I get crushed like a bug. So how do I make the same technique and not get crushed like a bug? He goes ahead, check your distance. Make sure you'd actually hit me. Good. Yay, good. He goes to cut. Got one. And I bring my body with the ax. I don't wave the ax around. From there, pow, smack. You notice I didn't have to try to cut him in the knee with the ax. If I slap him with three quarters of a pound of steel on the side of the condyles of his knee, if he's not out of the fight, he's gonna have a hard time beating me to the pub. <laughs> if he goes to attack, Got one. I can also slap it aside. What I don't want to do, cut, Got one. is get this here, because then he's going to do real damage to my haft. So look at the difference again. Cut one. Got one. I am slapping to the back of his blade with this part of the haft or the head if the angle and distance dictates so that it goes past. I also want to be careful of those kind of effects. I will never do so he goes, cuts one. Got one. I no longer have an axe haft. Or he goes, I've seen this before, and he just drops his hand slightly, and I have a very bad day. So I'm forward. He goes to cut. Got one. And I don't do this either, because then look what happens. So the technique as we train it is here. The technique as we might use it is against the hands. We don't want to smash our friend's hands. Even with the plastic party axes, these will really hurt your knuckles over and over again. Would you punch this 40 times? Obviously not. All right. So we have extra options we can perform with a basic defense. So cut one. one. Smack. And he flips it around to cut two, because he's not a moron. He goes, two. ah, here comes a blow. I can change over the haft and knock it out of the way, and then proceed to do things to it. All right, let's look at a couple of variations of things you can do with the Focosh, just to lay out how it's not just the cutting edge that matters. He can also stab at me. So he makes a thrust. Oh, I are dead. So I don't want to get stabbed. And what I can do is I turn to the side. By turning to the side, I now have the ability to drop my body weight. I have the weapon here. If he catches me by surprise, and I'm here and he begins his thrusts, I don't have to block with the head. I can also turn this way. Notice I have turned my body. Just like we do inside the living lineage, the body turn shields me from the thrust. Thrusts come in fast. It's not an accident that an Olympic lunge is 90 some miles an hour. They're fastballing with foils. With these, they won't be quite that fast, but they're still coming in like a freight train. So he goes to thrust. I make sure my hands are clear so I'm not going to accidentally get them poked. And then I can come around and bop him on the noggin. We have a Fokosh form that Professor Hedon created in order to practice those kinds of transitions, which we'll show in a following video. I can cut him. If we play around lightly and gently, I can smash, I can slap, I can punch. I can also open it up in one hand and keep him at a distance this way. Notice he's now much more concerned about protecting his hand. He's a little bit hesitant because we're using a steel saber, and that's all right. Boom, boom. Try to get a piece of something, and I have the advantage of slaps count. If we flip it around and he has the Fokosh and he's attacking me, slaps don't do a thing for me. But look what he's in a position to do now. Smash. That's not fun for me, right? So I come in. He blocks. I come in. He times it. Now he can hook my arm or punch me in the face or both. 
I'm much easier to punch in the face now that he's dragged me down, right? And all you have to do to get the hooking again is just cut like it's a sword and pull it down. It will go through every time. So this is just sort of an idea of things you can do with it. We don't have a lot of codified techniques for the Fokosh because it's a folk weapon. Folk weapons will typically have one or two or three things that are codified and everything else is taught by playing around with it because you've got lots and lots of time. So when you get a plastic party ax or a leather version, please feel free, look at folk dance, figure out what you know, steal ideas from everywhere under the sun and go test to see what works and what doesn't. Okay, now that I have a slightly more durable ax, we can also show one of the other techniques. So Coleman cuts one. Cut one. And I slap and I spiral around and I change my hand on the grip and I lock him up. Now Chaba's better at this than I am. He typically will lodge this in the back of the kidney and use the spike of the ax. But Coleman will vouch, right now, he doesn't really feel like going anywhere unless I'm escorting him along. Is that true or false? Eh, I'd say that's true. These okay. talks are sounding nice. Okay, well, don't lie to me just because I'm on camera and stuff. You don't have to make me look good. No, nope, it, it, definitely not okay with this. <laughs> All right, these spirals come out of the guard position. Make sure the haft is on good enough, there we go. As I'm here, I'm making this slapping movement, and you'll notice if I bring it forwards or backwards, there's a spiraling action through space. I can keep that engagement so that when he makes a cut, Got one. bang, and I continue coming up. So, Coleman, can you step forward so you're a little further on camera? Sure, sure. And can you place yourself a little bit here? Okay. All right, so this is a constrained space. We're filming. It would be a little bit bigger if we were out in a park or something. So those of you who are like, wait, he'll just kick me here? Yes, he could totally do that. This is just for demonstration. So he makes the cut. Cut one. Boom, and spiral. Hmm. And I get something that either takes a piece of him in an uncomfortable place. This is a piece. It's an un un uncomfortable place. <laughs> That's called his short ribs. Oh, you're ticklish. That's cute. Everybody tickle Coleman with an ax. <laughs> we lock him down. From here, I can't pull too hard because this is just a party axe and it's not secured to the haft. My stick would come out. But if I pull here, I can dig that in and notice what that does to distort his body. We don't have to go any further from here. I mean, I could poke him in the eyes, <laughs> Larry Curly mow him. But at this point, he's rendered relatively harmless. These techniques are not battlefield techniques. Remember, this is a folk weapon. This is, oh hey, my drunk uncle takes a swing at me with something because he's just had three too much and he's lost his temper about something stupid. We have options to use an ax as a grappling tool, not merely a swatter. We don't have to engage in lethal heavy metal album cover stuff, although that's fun with Coleman. <laughs> we have a wide variety of techniques. So go play around and see what you can come up with that works with the body types you're playing with, the sizes, the weapons, all those variables that make historical fencing fun. So Roman quite properly has said, can you define what a folk weapon is? And I'm like, duh, yes, I should totally do that. When I say folk weapon, I mean something that's not military issue per se, although in some places these were, but weapons that are commonly carried as a part of your regular daily life. One variation of this is a shepherd's crook shepherd's staff, and we have dances people did with them that had nothing to do with corralling sheep. They're part of your everyday life just like a pocket knife is. You use it for a hundred different purposes. Some of them might unfortunately be violent purposes. Most of them are just day to day, here's your life. Just like a tomahawk, for example. The difference for North Americans being that whereas a tomahawk is a tool first and a weapon second, the Fokosh is weapon first, tool second. Or if it's got the hammer version, I might be a swine herd and just be really, really good at throwing my focosh at swine in order to convince them to stop being knuckleheads. Swine herds have to be pretty aggressive. They're known for it because look who they herd all day. They're not gentle sheep. And no, they're not killing the swine. Swine are tough. They're just knock it off. So they have to know how to use these things and be aggressive and maintain dominance over their animals. And that's just one example of something you might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis out in the t countryside. As opposed to, I'm gonna keep the vile Austrian tax collector from taking my peasanty money. That's a different situation. <laughs> All right, have fun. 
We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.